Hello class, I'm Dr. Yang and welcome to CS370 Operating Systems. Let's think about models of thread implementation. The reason there are many different models that you have to think about is because uh, we have user kernel separation. So basically, where you want to implement threads, so inside kernel, uh, you can have implement threads in the kernel, or uh, you can implement threads in the user, and somewhere in between. This gets a little bit technical, but shown in this slide points out some of these models. Uh, some of them are trivial, some of them are complicated. So let's think about this business of implementing threads. All right, the first one, kernel threads. Inside kernel, you have multiple threads with no user land part. Okay, so this is uh, like a pure kernel threads. So, you know, no user land. So this is a sort of extreme case. Uh, you want to have this idea of thread as opposed to process. The idea of process had to involve user land isolation. So you have to be concerned by definition, the business of user land activity. But, you know, it's a threading. So if you don't need user land, you can implement threads purely inside kernel. You know, in many real world situation, most operating system, they support this pure kernel threads to handle in kernel activities. So the abstraction of thread and schedulable entity is useful to implement kernel services. For example, in Linux, if you list all processes, then you will see some of these process with process name with this bracket, and this is the uh, kernel threads. There's no user land part. And this is one schedulable entity that only exists in kernel. K block D. This is an in kernel block daemon services. Block IO requires services. So this is the thread, kernel thread that handles background block IO. And uh, you can extend this idea of kernel thread by allowing uh, user land component. So in this model, uh, single threaded processes. Uh, kernel associates one kernel path per process, kernel system. Okay, so this is, you know, uh, essentially, you know, no thread on user land. So in this model, single-threaded processes, you know, if you want to have concurrency, you know, you, you have to use process in user land. If you look at the next slide, so this is uh, sort of the model, single-threaded processes. So on top, you have kernel, and the bottom, you have a user land processes. So you have two processes, process one and process two, and it has only one thread. The maximum number of thread a process can have is one. And the thing is, there is a kernel counterpart here. Notice that this is only uh, noted as a PCB, a PCB1 and PCB2. So two processes here and only one thread each. And also, this shows in this kernel, you have kernel thread. So there's no user land component here, and they only exist inside kernel. So one way to think about user kernel, user kernel uh, interaction, user to kernel crossings, usually our viewpoint, the picture we have is usually we have a user program here, user process. This is where you execute your own code here. And from time to time, uh, you cross to kernel and you return from kernel. So you're the principal, and kernel acts as if a service provider. So you go out to kernel, and the kernel will provide some services. This is one viewpoint. This is one mindset, uh, one viewpoint. The other way to think about this whole thing is the kernel is the primary, and you have multiple threads. So because of the kernel, uh, has access to everything, has ultimate power. You know, you share everything. It is quite easy to implement the idea of multi-threading because everything is shared. And you let uh, some of these threads to uh, essentially venture out. Outside this kernel, you get to execute certain unknown code, source unknown. So you have to have this some kind of protection level you know you you have to execute this user code 
suspicious code. That's why we want to execute with lesser privilege. And this is the process concept. And you let, for example, this thread to venture out to outside of the kernel, and this is a user land, another user process. And this is another way of thinking about this whole user kernel threading model. I'm not saying that this viewpoint is incorrect. This is a valid model, but this is a different mindset, uh, especially if your focus is more on kernel. All right, so let's go back to the threading model here. So we talked about kernel thread and single threaded processes. And so single threaded process, this is basically no threading in user, only processes. Therefore, this model is not that useful. Next, multi-threaded processes using kernel threads. A process can have multiple threads. Kernel associates one kernel path to each user. Okay, so this idea can be captured like this. So let's focus on this one here. Now, this process has two threads in the kernel and user as well. So basically, the kernel enforces some kind of you know one-to-one -one mapping of the kernel's TCB structure to user and component of thread execution. So TCB exists in kernel. The TCB instances exist in kernel, and the kernel is the one that manages and schedules and performs context switches. So the waiting and context switch happens in kernel in this model. So now individual process can have multiple threads. It can have two, three, or you know, 100, okay, whatever. And as you can see, you have a separate structure, the PCB. So PCB is a, a process control block that describes the stuff that's related to process idea, mainly the address space, because uh, the address space is shared here. So in this model, going back to this whiteboard area. Now, with this model, multi-threaded process using kernel thread. So if this is a one user process, then you can allow multiple, in this case, three threads to venture out to the same cocoon, uh, you know, confines of this process concept. So, but still, the kernel is the one that manages the threads. The fourth one, user level thread. Thread abstraction is done in user land. Kernel only sees one process. Okay, so this is, I should add, this is a pure, pure user level thread. So in this model, the thread abstraction is done in user land. So the user process comes with this user level thread library. The scheduling and waiting and all this stuff happens entirely in user land. So if you look at this user level thread picture here, one in kernel, process can support only one thread maximum. But user code, time share, just like operating system, the thread library is in the user process, part of the user process. And it pretends that it is its own operating system. And time share, whatever CPU time slices you obtain from the kernel and you divide that time slice further inside user land and create this idea of threads. I should say this is a sort of pure user level threads because there's no recognition from the kernel in this pure user level thread model. In the early days of developing this thread, people explored uh, all different kinds of models. And this was the sort of easier path to implement the idea of thread. Okay, so comparing this model with a uh, kernel thread model, you know, there, there are pros and cons. But the thing is, I should say, most modern operating system supports kernel threads for many important reasons. One is to deal with I.O. suspension due to I.O. weight 
uh, needs to be recognized. For example, if you executing pure user level threats, and if, if threat A blocks because uh, it has to block with some kind of I/O operation, and then the kernel has no way to know this, so the entire process has to block. You can actually send a little bit of hint or you know communicate with kernel to deal with that kind of situation, but you're not fundamentally changing uh, the situation. And another reason is if you have uh, multiple CPUs and multiple cores, you know, if you want to take advantage of threat level parallelism present in the hardware, then you know you have to allow kernel to assign as many threads as possible. So you have to the kernel has to support the notion of threat. Otherwise the only way in this pure user level threat model, uh, the only way to take advantage of this uh, hardware parallelism is to create multiple processes. Uh, the another name of threat was lightweight processes, LWP, light, lightweight process. Basically, this is what it is. It's a process, but it's a lightweight. Okay, so <laughs> if you want to switch it to different process, then you have to switch entire address space. It's uh, a lot expensive, it's a costly compared to just switching stack and switching you know, thread context, not the entire address space. So that was the another motivation. And the thing is that this acronym LWP, sometimes I think it's still you can find uh, the this acronym LWP if you look at some of the thread packages that has history all the way back to you know, 80s and 90s. The last model, kernel thread, uh, user thread, M to N. This is a, a sort of hybrid between kernel threads and user level threads. So M kernel threads handle pool of and user level threads. It can be done and uh, it's being used. All right, uh, we are done with talking about thread models and we are ready to jump into context switch. But before we do that, we need to pick one, which is threading model that we are going to do. The thing is, the implementation of most realistic implementation gets really, really technical and complicated. So the thing is, we don't want to be distracted. We don't want to make the discussion too complicated. So we're just going to pick the easiest one here to discuss the context switch. The easiest one is actually the corner thread, the pure corner thread. So we just assume there is no user land. And the second easiest one is the pure user level threads because you know we don't actually have to interact with kernel. Either way, it's okay, but just pretend we are in this kernel thread model. Uh, because uh, we want to uh, somehow disable interrupt and we want to execute some sensitive code. And it's always easy to start from kernel and then and extend this to user. So from now on, we are pretending that the threading model is just kernel thread. And actually this point has been made very clear in the textbook, uh, but uh, this is uh, kind of important.